controversial opinion. We've always talked about what Muppets we'd be, right? <laughs> so I know AJ always defaults to like Animal because he plays the drums. But I feel like AJ has a real Sam Eagle vibe about him <laughs> that I can't, I can't unsee. <laughs> um, I'm here to talk about Meatloaf, my favorite Smish dinner. Lower. Sam the Eagle has some pretty distinct features, which I can argue that AJ also does, especially with the eyebrows. That's what I was saying, a strong brow. Yes, a very strong brow. I ate seven different types of meatloaf in preparation for- was that Oh, you did the deluxe edition? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Also, the feathers on his arms are kind of growing in nicely, so also I feel my like... my big fucking nose kind of plays a part well, in that. that's also why I'm Gonzo, because oh, I've got the bigger fucking yes. nose. Okay, cool. And I love chicken. Oh. <laughs> I mean, he's kind of a bird, so I think it was fine, you know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> my cock. <laughs> <laughs> So Matt, what what Muppet are you? I don't know. We always said the bear. Fozzie? Fozzie? Well, Fozzie bear, but also the like hyper-realistic bear. Oh, like the the really, the one that has like no eyes whatsoever. Like his his freaking like eyelids are like over his eyes and he's like, like, you know what I mean? I actually think Fozzie is better, but yes. I could kind of see myself being both, to be quite honest with you. Okay, very a lot of bear attributes. Like, Like they fuse like in Dragon Ball. Yeah. Welcome back to another episode of Tom Hates Albums. Golly gee, don't I. I'm your host, AJ Tanari. I'm Matt Glass. And I'm Tom Murphy. Last episode, you heard us talk about uh, Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys, uh, a classic of the 60s. Very, very nice album. It's one that I've honestly uh, come to appreciate. God Definitely. Only Knows. Great, great uh, single. Agreed. Uh, but this time we're taking a, a little, little bit of a harder approach on uh, this week's album. Something a little more glam, a little more heavy, something a little more Tom Speed. Oh my god, was it more my speed? Holy shit. <laughs> this, this week. No spoilers. Might be a new number one. Oh shit. Okay. Might have a new king of the hill. Oh. <laughs> it is genuinely, like, in my opinion, one of the best like albums that came out the, that year. I agree. Like in the 70s as like a whole decade. Yeah, it's a, it's a staple. The it's fucking, so fun. The fucking production on it is nuts. But we are referring to Bat Out of Hell by Meatloaf. Yes, we are. The first one, right? Because aren't all of his albums Bat Out of Hell? No, but there's three. But it's like Bat Out of Hell 2, and then it Bat has like a subtitle. Three. Yeah, yeah, it's Bat Out of Hell bad, 1. Hell. Yeah, Bat Out of Hell 1, Bat Out of Hell 2, <laughs> Back Into Hell, and then Bat Out of Hell 3, The Monster is Loose, which is no longer commercially available like anywhere. Oh, really? You can only find like a rip of it on YouTube. Oh. I can't find that shit anywhere. Did That's he, like, it Was it like controversial? I don't know. Was it just bad? <laughs> I he was embarrassed. Was it Bat? Holy That's shit. the question. That's isn't it? the fucking. It's the episode. We're done. Yep. All right, guys. <laughs> we wrap did it up. It. Ring the bell. Wow, that bat sure <laughs> went out of hell. <laughs> Boy, did it. But uh, yeah, we are reviewing the first bat out of hell, a personal favorite of mine. Yeah. Pretty much my music taste my sophomore year of high school, to be honest with you. Mm. Apparently, my music taste now. I've, I've been. <laughs> I, when I tell you, uh, not to throw anything together, we had to listen to two episodes. We're doing a bit of a, a batch record together. Mm hmm. Uh, I listened to this album like six times. <laughs> I listened to the other album once. <laughs> this album is very palatable and it's just so full of like adrenaline and, and momentum. Yeah. And just um, everything about this album is fantastic. But also a little bit of a fun fact. This was covered on the show that this show was based on album tonight with Ben and Evan. Oh, this was the God. second episode. Stop talking about him. No, you know which one. <laughs> Wait, shit, but that means in order for us to be original, we actually have to say the complete opposite of what they, what opinions they had no, in the episode. We'll, we'll be original because unlike theirs, we'll be entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway. Oh, I shouldn't say, Evan's a cool guy. Yeah, From he one, is. One, I, I agree. It's that yeah. other one. I, don't I even disagree want to say there. his name. His name is Ben and he's my friend. He shall not be named. <laughs> If you want me to ever come back on this podcast, you will never say his name again. <laughs> That's true. Tom is an employee, so Fuck, technically, he does bring in it's true revenue Plus, and views. The blackmail. He does. Yeah, and he did throw acid in my eyes. I forgot. Why it's do, true. Why do we have so much acid in the studio? I don't know. I've been putting it here. It's preventative measures, I think, for the other he who must not be named. Well, before we get in any interruptions by oh god, I hear him in the walls. Okay, before we get any interruptions uh, by a certain lead singer of a very uh, <laughs> mediocre pop band from yes. the 2010s, 2010s, we're gonna get into a little bit of history with Bat Out of Hell. So yes. the short end of it, Bat Out of Hell was released by Meatloaf or Michael Lee A Day, which is his actual name. Mm-hmm. 
uh, on October 21st, 1977 in the US. It was recorded for like, it took a year to record, 1975 yeah. to 1976. It was recorded in uh, Bearsville, Woodstock, New York, Utopia Sound, Lake Hill, New York, The Hill Factory in New York. A lot of hills. Way too and much a lot of New York. Way yeah. too much New York, in my opinion. <laughs> I prefer old York. And uh, yes, true. <laughs> House of Music, West Orange, New York. Uh, it's a hard rock, pop, glam rock, mm-hmm. progressive rock. It's like 46 minutes. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, recorded under Cleveland International slash, uh, wait, Epic? Wait, what the Epic fuck? Games wrote this album? <laughs> Fortnite? Dude, the Meatloaf skin in Fortnite? <laughs> Fortnite OC. Meatloaf OC? <laughs> Cleveland, Meatloaf, yeah. OG, not OC. OC Dude, something different. Let me tell you. The, <laughs> my Meatloaf OC. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, the, the Jin Steinman skin is going to be amazing. It's going to be so good. <laughs> He's he actually, has a, a, a custom glider that's just a motorcycle. <laughs> You can with use bat it. wings. Yep. yep. Uh, it recorded under Cleveland International Records and Epic Records, produced by Todd Rundgren. I I did see that. That's fucking awesome. That's a Which, fun name. Todd Rundgren. He did uh, the I like song. Tommy from Rundgren's. Oh, Chucky. Got, yeah, I, I see what you're doing from the Rugrats, actually. Uh, little other little thing about just Meatloaf in general. Mm-hmm. Meatloaf was sort of the front man, but it was actually more of a duo. Meatloaf was the one who actually like performed it, and Jim Steinman was sort of this ghostwriter. Yeah. And oh. probably arguably one of the best composers of like the modern rock scene mm-hmm. at the time. Uh, I also just found out from this mysterious uh, source of information that I will not mention um, that apparently this album was based off of a concept futuristic like musical mm-hmm. that was supposed to be an adaptation of Peter Pan. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, uh, I did not know that. Because I mean, the album doesn't really have like a consistent through line story, but like there's like elements of like rock opera elements with like the longer tracks. They definitely feel like they could have been a part of a larger yeah. story. A lot of the songs on here. I feel like just the songs themselves are a story. Yeah, you They're know what I mean. Each side, yeah. yeah. Um, Absolutely. But if we want to get into some of like the personnel, I can try to run through it like as quickly as I can. Uh, we got some uh, Kenneth Asher. It's like an A and a C H E R. Okay. Uh, on string arrangements, Steve. Oh Jesus Christ! From Steve, Minecraft. From Minecraft. No. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Margoshes. Okay. On orchestra arrangement, we have Meatloaf obviously on lead vocals and backing vocals, and he's credited for some percussion. Hmm. I he know. He's hitting his stomach. I, <laughs> Like Patrick Starr. Yep. <laughs> Todd Rundgren on guitar, percussion, keyboards, awesome. and backing vocals. Kasim Sultan, misspelled, <laughs> misspelled, misspelled as Sultan, like in the liner oh, notes. Okay. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, that's pretty terrible. Uh, on bass, guitar, and backing vocals. Roy Bitten on piano, keyboards. Roy Bitten's crazy, by the way. Mm-hmm. Have you seen mm-hmm. him perform? This first I've heard. Dude, he's kind of nuts. Look him up. Okay. Uh, S- Steve Margosh is on piano. Cheryl Hardwick on piano. Jim Steinman also did some keyboards. He did the spoken word on one of the songs in the beginning that we will get into. Okay. Oh, yeah. I see. Uh, Roger Powell, synthesizer. Edgar Winter on saxophone. That's all. Edgar Winter was on this? That's fucking tough. Holy uh, shit. I prefer his brother. Matt- Edgar Summer. <laughs> Oscar Fall. <laughs> Max Weinberg on drums, John Willie Wilcox on drums. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. Is that how it's written on <laughs> on the, the source? John Willie Wilcox. John Willie Wilcox. I'm so sorry for laughing at your name, but also you're probably used to it. So, Phil, and you're not uh, listening. Phil Scooter Rizzuto. Uh, That's cool. Ellen Foley, who is a fucking beast on this album. Is she Paradise? She is the female vocalist yeah. on this. Just oh, she's the whole fantastic. Thing. Okay, she's awesome. literally like the, nice. the, the fucking she's coolest. So good. Rory Dodd backing vocals. Gene Orloff, on the concert master, because uh, orchestra. Mm-hmm. That's uh, awesome. Marcia McLean also did a spoken word section. Nice. And uh, members of the New York Philharmonic and Philadelphia Orchestra Whoa. were on this album. Represent. It's, it's fucking wild. I, there are interviews where even uh, Michael Lee A. Day, otherwise known as Meatloaf, mm-hmm. he even said he was not ready for just how yeah. involved this production was going to be. So but I'm awesome. glad it was because the the final result is fucking fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, and it really set a tone for like the, the glam rock scene and like a bit of like the progressive rock and rock ballad scene, I would say. Definitely rock ballad, yeah. Like it really set a tone, I feel like. And for like, like the rest of his career pretty much as well. Yeah, because mm-hmm. he ended up doing rock ballads forever. Yeah. <laughs> he, not I not gonna lie, he kind of peaked with his debut. Uh he has some good stuff after it, but I think like some. this is like the, the best mean, it's gonna get. I would do anything for love as a classic. Yeah, but you, you compare Bad Out of Hell One with 
almost every song in there is fantastic. Too Bad Out of Hell 2, that has one really good song. Well, let me tell I, you. Arguably I, two. I, arguably two. I've never listened to Bad Out of Hell 2. <laughs> so, <laughs> d- you, you, it's not, Maybe so, someday. So, fun fact. I mentioned last time when we talked about this album that like it's really long. It's not really long track, li- track like number-wise. Mm-hmm. It just feels really long because mm-hmm. it's not nearly as enjoyable as this album. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Dead Ringer is like 10 times better. Yeah, Dead Ringer is underrated. That's it, a fun one. It's very fun. But this is definitely the best one 100% but uh that's a little bit of history for y'all sorry it took so long no that's it's right. important we're yeah. on a little bit of a time constraint family heads because unfortunately I'm a very very fucking busy boy <laughs> so uh, since Matt is a busy boy let's just hop right into it Tom what did you think of Bad Out of Hell I thought it was fucking awesome as I've said uh I've I've gone through and ranked every song I did a lot more for this one because I really enjoyed it hell yeah I'm so um, happy and after two months ago with the uh the incident episode <laughs> where we uh <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we we weren't on track very much. And to be honest, American football, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't have much to say about it. Mm-hmm. I went off topic a lot more often. I got on topic for the one you heard last month and this one. I really kind of crunched in, made sure that I took good notes. Uh, we I want to show that up and perform. We want to listen to some of our to some of our critics who apparently uh, said that we did not stay on topic enough. Absolutely. Shout out mm-hmm. to Evan. Um, <laughs> it's oh, wait. okay. Am I gonna have to turn on him too? It's okay. Uh, I'll do it. We'll, we'll we'll see. I'll do it. Well, I don't listen, think I won't. Well, listen, guys. What else? Yeah. What, did you what think? tracks stood out I, to you? Fucking all of them. Uh, let's see. I gave a uh, well. Paradise by the Dashboard Lights is probably the only song we've listened to so far that I'd give a ten out of ten. Like I put, I gave it ten out of ten. Nice. The fucking um, like five, almost like five act structure yeah. of that song. It's so it's good. Great. And it's so funny. I the fucking the, the baseball. immediate the baseball on the radio. Stop right it, there. Is so good as an analogy for them like getting through the bases. It's yep. so good. Mm-hmm. Um, the I'm gonna love you for the rest of my life, and then immediately now I'm, I'm waiting praying for the, for the end, end of time. time is so good. And now I'm, I'm praying, praying for the end of time. time. It's so to good. Hurry up and around. <laughs> I was at a hockey game when I was listening to this, and Hell I was yeah. just like, "This is really fun." Almost every song. One of my big criteria I've realized specifically when listening to this for like music that I enjoy is, is can I sing along to it and have fun? And every song on here yeah. has at least a line that's like real fun to sing. And he repeats it a few times. So you can like, come on and really sleep on it. It. <laughs> so baby, good. Baby, Have you seen the music video? It. No, dude, it's so creepy. I gotta like, check it like, out. He's like, he's going like bug eyed looking oh, really? at this woman. <laughs> he's like, come on and sleep on <laughs> it. Baby, baby. Like he's like the, <laughs> The what the moment when she's like comes back in like will you love me to the end of time like really pushing it and yeah. he's like uh 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 let me sleep on it sleep on it so so good I'll tell, you the, I'll tell you when the morning <laughs> it's so good his vocal delivery is just like such full of like personality power and gusto that like you just it's, can't help but fall in love with yes. his, like his performance and that that's I think why and, I like similar to like Star Bomb and Ninja Sex Party because Dan has this like similar energy to mm-hmm. it I think yeah. And, like, the similar air yeah. and like a little can be high energy very fun to sing along with mm-hmm. so i think i found my like niche okay okay least. we found something we, we guys got we something. got one we got one. guys I, uh, sound well, the buzzer I don't know. You listen i haven't said my full ranking yet that, we have that's to wait true and see. okay you never know um i one, can turn on this album <laughs> here's the thing here's the thing out of spite <laughs> like this if you think like the vocal deliveries are one thing all the music videos are like full-on theatrical productions how many oh tracks God, got music awesome. videos bad out of hell uh you took the words right out of my mouth makes sense i don't know i don't think heaven can wait i think all revved up okay uh Paradise. Two out of three. Paradise. Two out of three ain't bad. It's so good. It's <laughs> such a good one. That's I don't so think, I don't know if For Crying Out Loud got one. It do, I don't remember, because I used to watch these a lot. Mm-hmm. A little too much, to be honest <laughs> with you. These music videos are kind of weird to sit You're through. You're just a big loaf head, you know? It's just them under these like heavy fucking lights and just complete darkness in the background. I see. It's like really weird. <laughs> I mean, he did have like a background in theater, right? Because he, he, he was in Rocky Horror. Was he in the stage? play before the movie i don't know okay i hope so that'll be in the com in the description It'll oh yeah the, the uh he question. was he <laughs> yes or no <laughs> yeah, th- that's the question not yes. even we're gonna research <laughs> no. it yeah um <laughs> you tell us you tell yeah f- come on audience we're no. done enough for, it's got work to do yes okay? god um for those who don't know uh meatloaf w- did play eddie in the rocky horror picture show film yes and Killed it. Fucking killed it. His song mm-hmm. is like one of my favorites. I love it so much. 
I haven't seen it. Uh, I think you'd like it. Probably. Yeah. It seems like up my alley. You got to be careful. There's there's some boobies. There are some boobies. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's a ne- step too far. I man. am never going to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> as I look it's okay, at my, Tom. We'll cover your eyes. As I look at my notes here at the other songs, I've been eyeing over my rankings. Uh-huh. And for some reason, I just didn't rank for crying out loud. I just don't have a, I must have just forgotten to write a number down next okay. to it. I remember really enjoying it, and the only note I have next to it is that I love his vocals on that one. Oh God! Um, I feel honestly like, same. Was here. that the one that was like that's the closer? It's kind of a little like more somber. Like it's still high Hobbit energy, but like a little bit like sweeter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For um, crying out loud, you know I love you. And that then one. all revved up with no place to go, and two out of three ain't bad. I gave eights out of ten. And then the other, the starting three songs all got nines out of ten. Nice. So I'm pretty much nothing was really? below an eight. You really like Heaven Can Wait? That's like, I did. I actually liked okay. it a lot. Huh. I'll save my I'll save my my thoughts until after you're done. It's it was a slower song, but again, I I like the way he sings. He's even when it's slow, you can tell that he like really gives a shit. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. there are some like slow songs that I'm like. Let's give some energy. Like I get it's supposed yeah. to be a little sad, but like you can be energetic and sad. You know what I mean? Just step up, dude. It's, it's music. <laughs> I like a little energy in my music, and he brought it even during the kind of like more somber yeah. one. Yeah. If you want, uh, actually, I'll, I'll save it. I'll, I have so many things to say about this, but okay. this is not called Matt hates albums. You <laughs> oh, know what do I mean? You not like that song? No, no. It's <laughs> I. I love all the songs oh, on I here. Was just curious. But uh. Well, okay. What else do you have to say? Because I yeah. feel like I, um, I, I really want to say a lot, but I also don't want to interrupt gonna, you. I'll go through my, my notes, just like whatever notes I think are funny. Oh, like, you know what? We need to stop and talk about song number two for a second. Shall we stop right the there? The wolf. <laughs> the wolf <laughs> the, with the red summer summer night, Would you yeah, offer your, your throat, throat to the wolf with the red? So in would the you, music video. And then would you offer your mouth to me is what she asks in return. I just want to throw that Yes. Out. I bet you say that to <laughs> all the boys. <laughs> Oh, the fucking snare hit that leads right into it. it's so fucking It good. was a hot summer night in the hill of and I was it's such a whiplash. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Did you, I remember listening, I was like, oh, bad out of hell, I really enjoyed it, and then that started, I was like, what the fuck am I listening? Yeah. I was mowing the lawn, and I just like stopped and was like, what the fuck is going on right so, now? So also, and then the actual song started, I was like, what? What, huh? and what is the beginning? Well, it's a really, really weird, like, so, like I mentioned before, the music video uh, they do the spoken word, mm-hmm. but it's so, it's like, they take it to like 10. I is see. Like Jim, is he like dressed up? Is he in a fursuit? Unfo- unfortunately, no. It's Jim Steinman. What's the fucking point? Jim Steinman does, like the composer, yeah. he did the spoken word at the beginning with, uh, the, with the woman who did the spoken word. Mm-hmm. And, uh, in the music video, he fucking screams. Damn. Like he's, he's so hard that he like spits on her. Ew. Actually. Hot. It was really, really hot. It was a hot in. summer it's night. What she, it's what she wanted. <laughs> That's why, yeah. She offered her throat to the wolf. And okay? in return, you get she got the wolf. a little bit. You know what there I mean? There were two wolves inside of her, <laughs> oh, so to God. speak. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> no. He was both oh, of them. no. Oh, no. <laughs> one with one with the red roses oh, and one with the God. with the white roses. Oh Jesus Christ! That's the type of flower. <laughs> Fuck it, I, Tom. The only other type of... <laughs> Tom, what other songs did you like on oh, Bad um, Hell? I just want to write note that my note for that was what the fuck is the wolf opening? That's all I wrote for that one. Um, I think we just found uh, out. Heaven can wait. I I googled it because I was actually curious about that one. I started to go through and see if any of these songs were like on movie soundtracks or mm-hmm. anything. Um, I didn't find anything like that. But apparently that one's just about a guy that's like uh, happy with his life. And like, that's why heaven can wait. Cause he's just like, yeah, he's just content and chill with what's going on. He's like, I don't want to leave this yet. I mm-hmm. thought that was kind of nice. Yeah. No, it's a um, very nice sentiment. I just wrote fun horns on all revved up with no place yeah. to go. And I don't know if they were necessarily horn. Like at the no, beginning, no, they are oh, horns. There were definitely saxophone it's in there. A, yeah, something yeah. similar. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed that. Uh, that was fun. Um, and then it just like gets real hype at the last minute of that. So, like it just mm-hmm. like ramps up yeah. the last like 45 seconds. When it goes seconds. double time. Yeah. yeah, it gets real hype for a second. I thought that was really fun. Um, two out of three ain't bad is so funny to me. I don't know why. Because there ain't no Coupe de Ville it, at also, the bottom of a Cracker Jack box. It's like kind of beautiful sounding, but then when you listen to it, yeah. it's just like. <laughs> she's just being like, an asshole. He's like, I need you. I want, I want you, you, but I'm never, never going to love, love you. you. And that's fine. You know, it's not bad. Two out of three ain't bad. It's so good. <laughs> uh, Paradise by the Dashwood Light, as I said, by far my favorite. Mm-hmm. Hilarious. The baseball radio innuendo, so good. Fantastic. Holy cow, good. I think he's going to make it. <laughs> that's my Stop right there! 
<laughs> I fucking love old timey like announcers like voice. That's and so funny. It has like funny the, the porno me. music in the background <laughs> yeah. too, which is so good. <laughs> like very subtly there. Yeah. Boom, yeah. Boom, it's boom, boom, so boom, boom, boom. And then they're kind of going like, oh, 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 like in the <laughs> yeah. background. And the female vocals are phenomenal. I oh feel my like gosh, she, she's incredible. She, Ellen she did a lot for that like yeah. second act of that song, especially. She also does some vocals in Bad Out of Hell too, oh. like the and the squeak wool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, not, not like as well. Bad okay, of, okay. The, the bad of the hell, too bad. Hell bad of, I should have clarified, bad, ladies and hell. gentlemen. Too, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Okay, I should have. Monsters <laughs> Unleashed. Sorry. <laughs> I'm quitting this podcast. Tom, you can have my fucking spot, man. We're going to have to if you to leave. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, so the, in the title fucking track, Bat Out of Hell, oh, yeah, Ellen Foley yes. does do some vocals. She's okay. the part where yeah. she's like, Ooh. I did catch yeah. that. That actually, sounds yeah. like also uh, um, The Lion Sleeps Tonight. Oh, yeah. You yeah, yeah. that part? Bo- oh, we Is she bo- like, bo- like at the end where she's like, Ooh. And, and I always think like in the jungle. Like, could you imagine that fusion? Like, <laughs> bring it in the meatloaf, <laughs> the mighty meatloaf. In the meatloaf, the, the mighty loaf. meatloaf, the wolf with the throat and the. <laughs> <laughs> Is, would it be called the lion loaf or the meat king? <laughs> oh, I don't want to meet the meat king. <laughs> I don't think I like lion loaf either. Now that I think about it. <laughs> God, this is this the worst episode, red pill blue boys. pill. Guys, with an episode as sexy as this, we should have waited till February. Am You're I right? right? You're right. This should have been my birthday month. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Um, and then for crying out loud, I just wrote that I love his vocals. Oh, um, my final I'm... thoughts were that it was very uplifting and triumphant sounding, which I was a big fan of. Mm-hmm. Uh, very high energy. And it ends on a 10 always. Oh, it always like ramps up. Yeah. It's like constantly ramping up and every song ends at like the highest energy of the song, which I really enjoy. Or at least mostly from mm-hmm. what I remember. Nice. Um, and then it's very fun to sing along to and to play air instruments too oh, while doing doubt. yard work. Hell yeah, man. This is like an album where you just do that. It's just a fun album, dude. Like you just get lost in it and it, time flies by every time you listen to it. I, I love revisiting this album. It's fantastic. I'm going to literally listen to this when, we, like, when we're done recording. <laughs> oh, I will absolutely. What's it, uh, Paradise for the Dashboard Light is on my own repeat playlist already. Hell yeah. I've listened to it like tw- 10 times at least in the last like week. We're very glad that you at least liked it yeah, more than I the other ones. I enjoyed this one a lot. Mm-hmm. Like American Football. Uh, <laughs> Met at <laughs> hell. I thought Beach Boys was okay. I put it kind of in the middle of the road. I mm-hmm. see. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Matt, what, what are your favorite tracks on this album? Oh God. So honestly, I love like I want to say a solid maybe like 94% of this album. Mm-hmm. Actually, there's not, there's too little, many, there's too little tracks for that number. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, it's, I, we know what you mean. You really yeah. liked most of it. Yeah. Is I there really, one song that you, uh, it, it's actually two. Oh, um, damn. so I, heaven can wait is not a bad song. And when mm-hmm. I listened to it, I was like, you know what? I should really give this one more of a listen at times. Mm-hmm. Cause like, it, it's very nice. And I really like the sentiment kind of yeah. a lot. Yeah. But, um, it's that one. And then it is, uh, all revved up and no place to go. Really? I actually am not the biggest fan of that one. Okay. I just think it's like the, you know what it's like, like something about that. Like, and the fact that it repeats, I'm like, mm-hmm. that's a little annoying. Gotcha. But every, I can get past it though. Yeah. The horns are really, really fun on that one, but it's really just those two. And even then they're still fairly good songs. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my goodness. But the ones that like, I love my favorite song off this album either has to be Easily the first track or the last track. Really? Okay. I, for crying out loud. I love for crying out loud. Hmm. Very that, good song. That song is like probably the best. Like I don't even know how to describe it. It's such a nice love letter and testament to somebody that like that you really know had an impact on your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And maybe I I hold a lot of sentimental value to this album. Yeah. This album was like literally my high school experience in a weird way. It, even the wolf part, which got a little bit hairy. <laughs> hey, listen. I was very I was very pubescent in so high school. school was so hot is what I'm hearing. It was a hot summer night. Amen. Here uh here in the studio. But I think <laughs> that was always revved up and ready to go. That's true. I'm sweating so much right now. It's it, so hot in here. It's very, very hot in here. Yes. Um but shit, is that a wolf? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a <Saint> Roos. <laughs> In a wolf mask. <laughs> Where'd you get that? Is it, it's his fursuit. <laughs> Nate Rooster's fursona. <laughs> oh, God. Nate Rooster. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking feather suit. Oh. <laughs> I'm just imagining someone just like wearing like a fucking rooster head, but his cock is out. Like. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's ironic because the cock is out in both. That's sentiments. true. First track and last track are probably my favorites. Mm-hmm. I don't even think I could even like come. I can't rank either one of them. Yeah. Bad Out of Hell is such a strong opener. I love it so much. Like, Very good. from beginning to end, it is literally just a joyride. The yeah. freaking piano. <laughs> like, oh my God. I need the and drums then, that are matching that on the, the snare <laughs> rolls. Yeah. And then, like, oh my God, the guitars. And then from the very last moment when he's screaming, like a bad out of hell, mm-hmm. like, and holding that out. It's so, and then, like, the middle part, too. Yep. But for crying out loud, that song literally, it's just like, a, it's a sweet song, it's a sad song, it's somehow like one of the most action-packed songs on this album, mm-hmm. and that's, that says a lot, considering all these songs have like such yeah, social impact, energy. Mm-hmm. but uh, I, would, I would probably say, like, if I was going to keep going in terms of like how much I liked each track, especially since there's only like seven of them on mm-hmm. here, mm-hmm. Uh, next, I would most likely say that uh, two out of three ain't bad is like my f- second favorite. It's, so it's a funny. classic. It's, it's fun. So it's fun. The lyrics are funny. It's mm-hmm. also really sad. Yeah, <laughs> it's a really weird situation. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, no, that's um, that's that's definitely one that like I very much appreciate. Paradise by the Dashboard Lights. So fucking good. Yeah. It's great. So, I love that he's the butt of all of the like. It's very. Yeah. Look, what makes it funny is that he's clearly like a scumbag in all of these yeah. songs, and I love that. <laughs> Ain't no doubt about it. We were doubly blessed. blessed. Cause we were barely seventeen, and, and we, we were, were barely, barely dressed. dressed. He's so Whoa. creepy in that video. I can imagine because like in most of the other videos, <laughs> he's wearing like a suit jacket with like his collar up, yeah. like this white, like whole Baroque like outfit. Oh, and the vest. And, and that one, he doesn't have the jacket and it's just like, he looks like someone at a wedding who got <laughs> like a little bit too drunk and like was just kind of like, ah, it's time to go on the dance floor. I see. So he's meant to be like 17. <sighs> Not Would you that, say I he guess? looked young? Jeez. No, don't summon him. No. <laughs> oh God, it's rumbling. Did we find someone younger? A rival to Nate Ro- can can Meatloaf come and oh shit fight? guys guys it's rumbling it's rumbling He's oh my God. <sighs> finally it's just me and you. oh shit Matt's back never mind <laughs> uh uh it's the three of us still Matt what happened Jesus Christ I don't know I think Hope- he evolved into a sandworm yeah Did you see anything in the tunnels no it was weird it's like he he burst through the wall and he was floating off the ground almost like like closer by nine inch nails yeah. <laughs> I was going more for like mob psycho. Nine inch like, nails. What? What? <laughs> Matt, what else do you like about Paradise by the Dashboard Lights? So, <laughs> honestly, uh, you took the words right out of my mouth. Is such a I a, love that song. It's such a fucking catchy song, mm-hmm. and I love the clapping section at the end. Mm-hmm. Literally everything about it. That's the one where if I was going to describe any of the albums as this, I this or the albums. If I was going to describe any of the tracks as this, this this one's like shimmering. It's like sparkly. Yeah. You know I, know what I mean, definitely with those fucking organs in like the middle. Like, oh, I, I love that part so much. It's so good. It's mm-hmm. so vivid. Plus, his voice is so rich on that track. I love too. the way his voice on all of them. You took the words right out of my mouth. mouth. So, you know, the one part where it's like, I just can't seem to make any sound. And then like the part was like, boo, boo, in the music video, he starts doing he makes this face with the microphone. It's just going. <laughs> oh god that's awesome for those at home matt is biting his lower lip and moving in slow motion just with his of, eyes closed just kinda thrusting like, kind of yeah thrusting like hip movements just like, full body rolling yeah. with his he's not yeah. like okay and god, the god rest you meatloaf mm-hmm. he's got a jack black energy yes mm-hmm. you know, um, very much very much jack black energy but a bit more um <laughs> He he would probably get mad if you y- yes a bit more Republican. Oh, no, <laughs> uh, you know. um, no, but he, fuck. What was I gonna say? I just forgot it. I'm sorry. I just I'm sorry. Can't it's not your fault. To make sorry, did I take sound. the words out of your mouth? You did. Oh, shit. You must did. have been while I was kissing you. <laughs> uh, that does happen a lot here at the family. Is album. that why my legs so wet or like I'm, I don't know? That, that was, was for the, the sandworm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining the worm from fucking Beetlejuice. I never seen Beetlejuice. Oh, should I spoil why does, this? Why does has Nate Roost developed the ability to transform an act? Because he was a rooster. I think it might have just been now like he's living a sand in the worm, unless he's trained the sandworm. It's because the acid you've been leaving around and the grease. I think he's just been like evolving, he's been doing he's mutating. Yeah, what he's been doing drugs. That's the kind of acid I've been leaving around. <laughs> That's his kind drugs. of fun. Sex and drugs and rock and roll. 
That's a lyric no, on. I don't like rock and roll uh, or sex. That's fair. Yeah, Tom can't see boobs. He's not allowed. I feel like Ronald Reagan should have banned rock and roll in the, in the 80s. Maybe it would have been a little better. Should have banned sex. <laughs> Ban se yeah, actually, we should have banned sex. <laughs> Fuck. In its entirety. 6969. 69. That's what that song's about. And we're back. Where did we go? <laughs> the pocket dimension? The void, yeah. So, Heaven Can Wait and uh, All Revved Up, they're great songs. I'm just not the biggest fan of them. Like, or not even that. I don't listen to them as much as I do the other ones. Yeah. Like, the other ones are so good to me that those kind of fall flat just a little bit. I gotcha. For really particular reasons, but they're still pretty good. Yeah, that's fair. And overall, this album is, like, one of my favorites yeah. of all time. Oh, yeah. This and Dead Ringer are probably, like, my two favorite albums by him. Mm, I would agree. Because every single other one's kind of ass. <laughs> They're all just ballads. Wouldn't well, listen. I got no problem with ballads. Hey, I really you, enjoyed this one. I haven't listened like to any other one, so we'll see. Mm -hmm. Maybe someday we'll discover it on this very podcast. Hey, AJ, what did you think of this album? Oh, uh, I fucking oh, yeah. love this album. I think <laughs> this guy's got opinions too. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Uh, I I do quite like this album. I do got to uh, give a shout out to the album tonight for having me discover the album more. I listened to Paradise by the Dashboard Lights beforehand, which I really enjoyed. But uh, their episode kind of got me to check it out a little more. And I'm very grateful for it because it's a fantastic album all around. I think Bad of Hell is easily my favorite track. I think it's fantastic. Great vocals. I love um, just like the syncopation of the drums during the Nothing Really Rocks, Nothing Really Rolls part. Um, yeah, I think this album is, is pretty fantastic. I would say Heaven Can Wait I'm not the biggest fan of. Mm -hmm. But every other track I really like. And I'd say probably... Sorry, but for crying out loud, it's not really up there for me. It's okay. I think of all like the uh, the epic tracks, like the the over like five minute ones. There, it's kind of like on the bottom, but I, I still really like it. There's really no bad song on this album. It's a great time, great energy, great instrumentals, a lot of humor, charm, personality, gusto, and yeah, it's it's just a great album for anyone who wants to get into albums. Which I think will transition us into Tom. Did you hate this album? I did not hate this album. I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Hell yeah. Um, I think this is finally, we have a full album of long songs that I appreciated. So the fucking, the rhetoric that I hate long <laughs> songs can be squashed. The rhetoric that I've made up can be squashed. Shit. How, who's going to correct the wiki? It's going to be me. Don't worry. Yeah. Tom, Tom does our wiki. Anyway, I gave it a nine out of 10 and I gave it an A plus tier. I don't want to put it at S tier. Okay. I feel like there's an S tier out there mm -hmm. that I, I'm going to find someday. But right now, it's the highest rated album right above Starbomb at 8.75. And wow. since I've done a list, I just <clears> want to say uh, Metallica Master of Puppets is not number two. Led Zeppelin 4 is. I really? went back and re-listened to what Whoa. my rankings were from the old episodes. Uh, I considered them consistent. And mm -hmm. Led Zeppelin 4 was in a 7.9... 7.9 leads out of 10 Zeppelin. <laughs> as I said I it in the episode. Um, and then Metallica, uh, Master of Puppets, I think I said 7 to 8. And I've just, anytime I said like a range, I just went to the middle. So yeah. I, I made it 7.5. 7 yeah, that's how Starbomb ended up with an 8.75. I think I said 8.5 to 9. So mm -hmm. I just made it 8.75. But nice. this is a 9. Hell yeah, man. 9 A plus tier. Awesome. Glad we got one. Yeah. Matt, what'd you think of Bad Out of Hell? This album, like I said before, it was probably one of the like pillars of my music taste. Mm -hmm. This album and like pretty much all of Queen's discography is what got me to really uh, even dive in remotely to like old classic rock. Yeah. And then also just like the rock of the 70s, 80s, 60s. Mm -hmm. This is like one of the gateway albums to really just diving into old music in general. Nice. Besides jazz, because my dad actually really likes jazz. But um, this album's honestly like a nine... Point six. It's like A plus tier for me. I thought about going higher than nine. I I feel I just like I didn't want to do a ten or like really high up this or like part of me was like there's gonna be more albums. I need to leave that kind of like that upper echelon just in case. Room. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I feel like if I get an album that has songs that I truly am like nostalgic for that is also really good, that'll be when yeah. I start getting to like your S tiers. I think like ninja sex part. <laughs> I think the only reason why I uh, just don't rank this higher is because like I when I first started getting into this album, I watched the music videos first and then like listen to the album in order. But like I watched music videos first and they were my first like impressions mm -hmm. of the song mixing with the actual song. And let me tell you, he's vocally he was vocally a stunning performer. Um, even opera singers were telling him that with proper vocal training, he would be probably the best singer. Mm, wow. Yeah. Damn. He, he was uh, classi classified as something known as a Heldon tenor, which okay. is like... A bad at a Heldon tenor. Which is kind <laughs> of like a ca uh, uh, a counter tenor. It's like a... Uh, two, there are too many tenors. But... um, That's what they said about pentatonics, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was a baritone. 
<laughs> Tom, we learned. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. But uh, yeah, no, honestly, um, he he's vocally stunning. He is uh, he when he was alive, and even when he was younger, he was kind of a scary looking dude. Yeah, not gonna lie to you. Um, I, if if I if I didn't know who he was, and I saw him in a dark alley. <laughs> I'd be kind of scared. To be fair, if I looked on a dark alleyway and saw literally anyone, I wouldn't be <laughs> super thrilled. Let alone no, a big I, round man with long flowing hair and a wind sweeping through his pirate shirt. And the thing is, in the music videos, he is in a dark. He's in front of a dark background, so I've only seen him in dark scenarios. Yeah, that's true. So from what I know, I don't think I really want to like see him in a dark alley. Well, especially don't now. have to anymore. <laughs> That's true. Unless you do, in which case you need that to That is run. terrifying, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The ghost of meatloaf. Might loaf. be Jack Black. The meatloaf. Go. I, never mind. Move past it. <laughs> the meatloaf. <laughs> there you go. I've got that. <laughs> Next song. Meatloaf. <laughs> oh, God. I'm being light. I'm, I'm getting lightheaded, man. <laughs> this is wild. Uh, I think Nate's turning on the gas leak again. Shit. Why do we keep around mustard gas? I think it smells great, personally. <laughs> I prefer ketchup gas. <laughs> <laughs> AJ, what else do you have to say about this album? Uh, this album is fantastic. It was an album that I kind of got into uh, in college when I was more so exploring just different music and different albums, uh, essentially kind of getting into album listening. So it was like pretty much on repeat, like my junior, like first semester, junior year, um, which I fucking adored. Um, it's just a great all around time. There's fantastic instrumentals. I, I already said what I liked about it, so I'll just give my ranking. Uh, I say also an A+. Plus. I'd say, like, it is a very good album. It doesn't quite have that, like, star-studded power to reach the top. Um, but it is still a great time, and I'd highly recommend it to anyone. Same here. And I guess that'll do it for this episode of Tom Hates Albums. Absolutely, except I've got one last thing, That's as I always right. do. Yes. Um, I was gonna read off my Discover Weekly, but I didn't think it was chaotic enough. So instead, we're gonna play a fun little game. Uh, what's I have that? A, I have a Spotify stats app that, like, tracks all of my, like, top artists of all time uh -huh. from Spotify. I just want to see if you guys can guess my like my top five. <laughs> top like, five artists? You each make like three guesses, and then I'll just read out the top five. Okay. They're, I'll be honest, four of them are pretty obvious, I would say, and then there's a wild card in there. Okay. All right, I know. I think I can guess at least three of them. Matt, you go first. Okay. Starbomb. Absolutely. Starbomb is number four. Hmm. Ninja Sex Party. Ninja Sex Party is number five. <laughs> Weird L. No. <gasps> what? He's not in my top five. Which is surprising. I, it's, I think I know why, but we'll we'll get to that. Okay. The proto men. Yes. Wow. That was the wild card. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if you get that one. They're number three. Because I know you like them. Um, number two feels kind of bullshit to me, to be completely honest. Can I take a guess of yes. what the some, what the two other ones mm -hmm. I'm guessing? Yes. Is Bon Jovi one of them? No, he should be. but Because I, he has your favorite song. He yes. does. So that's why. And the why. thing is, I've noticed with a lot of the albums that are, they're only artists that I listen to the full albums of because I love Bon Jovi, but I only listen to like three of his songs. Where the proto men, I listen to two albums worth of their songs pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. So like I get more listen time out of it. Any other guesses before I read off the other ones? Is there anything Smosh related? No. Don't think <laughs> I Epic no. Rap Battles. Epic Rap Battles is in like the top 15. I'm not gonna. Oh, they're number 8. They're number 8. They're right behind Billy Joel and ahead of Star Kid. <laughs> oh, um, Star Kid. Number 1 kind of surprised me, but it kind of makes sense because I've been a fan of it. I go into his music a lot. Bo Burnham is my number oh, 1. Oh, really? I should have yeah. guessed that. Yeah, I thought maybe Matt would guess that because I'm pretty sure we drove to school once or like mm -hmm. somewhere and it was that we listened yeah. to all Bo Burnham the whole time. Gotcha. And then number two is Melanie Martinez, right? Yeah, how'd you know? <laughs> it's uh, King Gizzard. No, and I'm the just Lizard. Kidding. Oh, that'd be um, fucking sick. It's WWE, which feels like kind of bullshit. Yeah. That they're like a full category <laughs> because it's a bunch of different bands and musicians under the WWE umbrella. Mm -hmm. Because they're all put under, yeah. Well, that was uh, certainly interesting. A, a, yeah. a closer look into Tom's musical psyche. Queen is number six. I feel like I need credit for that. Yeah, and Big that's Time Rush good. made top ten. <laughs> I just need that to be said as well. <laughs> nice. So technically, you know my top ten if you were listening carefully, because I said all ten of them. Uh, Tom, we will be posting Tom's Spotify wrapped on our story. For that the is family true. Album. Absolutely. We, 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 it'll already be out by this point. It'll have been out for like a month. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Shit. I mean, we're totally recording this the day before it comes out. Yeah. I mean, you all have seen it already. That'll yeah. be interesting. Actually, we should just that's... do all three of ours. Yeah, why not? And then and Ben's. Yeah, we don't have to do that. It's gonna be shit music, like worse than mine. I see. I, I won't let it happen again. Well, family heads. I think it's time for AJ to take us out now that Matt's ruined it. Matt out of hell, if you will. I've been cooking that for the last thirty minutes. Um, <laughs> 
and just I, workshop I couldn't it. find a good spot for it, so I just forced it in at the end. Paradise by, by the, the my heavens, assboard lights, heavens, my assboard shites. Um, for crying out loud! Yeah, I'll end this podcast. Damn, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Hot summer night, Jeez, guys! For- <laughs> fucking thanks for listening to Tom <laughs> albums. Uh, I'm your host, Adrian Sonari. I'm Matt Glass, and I'm Tom Murphy. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for listening. Peace. Don't come back.